Uh, pretty early, about as early as I could walk. I was walking around my old man's garage, a bit of a hot rod haven. Yeah, not much has changed since then. My old man used to build 34 grills, like a reproduction 34 grill. I used to help him a you know, weeknight, cutting bars, filing, and he said to me, well, let's, let's build you a grill, we'll hang it on the wall. So by this age of seven, I had a 34 grill on the wall and that's the grill on the roads to now. From that point, that was always gonna be the starting point for the first hot rod or my first, um, first car. My dad was Barrio Colalillo. So in the Australian sort of hot rod scene, he was pretty well known for many years for his cars and, and building 34 grills. His passion for hot rods transformed over the years and he got into drag racing for a little while. And then he also got into customs as he got a little bit older got out of the fast lane and it was about low and slow. He's probably most known for uh, his custom Cadillacs. He built two pretty well-known Cadillacs here in Australia. Uh, the first one was King Cad, which was a 55 Cadillac. And then he later built a bit more wild version in a 59, which was called Wildcat. Working alongside dad and seeing the journey, the real journey, uh, the highs and the lows of what's involved in building a car to that sort of level. I guess I've got the benefit of going, well, I don't need to do that. My old man did it for himself but he was also pretty ambitious and you know, wanted to make a name, uh, make an impression on the scene. And he did that, um, but it's hard work. you know. So I sort of step back a little bit and what I do with my cars, I try and do just for, for my enjoyment. And you know, the only people I'm trying to impress are my mates. Uh, not that we try to outdo each other. I think we just encourage each other to go that little bit further. And I think that's probably the best way to do it, yeah? Because the show side of the scene can get pretty competitive and starts to detract from what it's really about, which is building something that, you know, ticks your boxes, not someone else's. Hot rodding to me is friendships. Yes, it's the cars, but it's about, you know, the camaraderie, helping each other out, willing each other on, or hey, when someone gets the crunch point, you're out in the shed, the boys come over, they give you a hand, get over the hurdle. When you've had enough, yeah, they're here to push over the line. And a lot of my friends today I've known from, you know, through my dad and through when I was young, through cars, and they're a big part of my life. So for me, the biggest thing out of all of it is the friends and the camaraderie that comes along with it. A hot rod or a custom car can be many things. For me, each particular car should have a specific purpose. Some of my cars are built to be driven more, but some hot rods and certain cars I've had are built to be a little bit silly, and that's okay. As long as you've got a clear intent, it makes you uh, happy when you look at it or you get a kick when you hear it fire up or you're rolling down the road. That's what it's about. So my shed at the moment, I've got two of my dad's uh, hot rods. The two cars that he had when I was growing up as a little boy had the most impact and impression on me and I guess hold the most sentimental value. So that's the black 34 Roadster, uh, full fended, flat head, just a nice little cruiser. The 39 Plymouth three window coupe, that's a car my dad bought when he was 17 years old. So those two cars are probably closest to, to my heart in terms of sentimental value. I also have my 34 Roadster, which is the first hot rod I built. It started with a grill, seven years old. Chassis and body came over the next five years through you know, working with dad, saving some money. I had the car on the road by 18, 19. It's a car I drove a lot when I was young. I drive it now when I have time. It's kind of the car that I forget I'm still in love with and every now and then I pull it out and remember why I fell in love with it or why I built it that way, which is nice. I've also got what is, I guess, the lifelong project, which is probably the car I'm most passionate about, which is my 36 three-window coupe. And then I've also got another project, which is my son's car. When he turned one, opportunity popped up to buy a mate's 34 five-window body. I couldn't let it leave. Uh, so swung it with the wife that it's uh, the son's first birthday present, and it is. You know, and I was fortunate enough that I you know, had a great childhood growing up building hot rods with my dad and hopefully can do the same with my son Will as he grows up. But uh, we'll see, we might turn it into a bit of an event car before he gets too old and then turn it into a proper street car when he gets closer to looking like he can have a license. We'll see, hopefully he's into it. If he's not, I own a 34.5 window, so it's okay. I also have another car that I'd wanted for a long time and somehow it all the stars aligned and a chance to purchase it came up about a year or two ago. It's a 1956 Continental Mark II. It was customised by the late Richard Zoki. He was a pretty well-known uh, custom car builder from California. Um, him and guys like John D'Agostino, Rick Dorr, were the guys that had new cars or two new cars every year through the 90s and early 2000s. And I remember seeing that car in a, in a magazine, I think it was American Rodder, 
in the late 90s when it came out, not knowing what it was, just knowing I really liked it and it left an impression on me from that day. Um, so, you know, 20 years later, a chance popped up to own it. And yeah, it was, I had to sell a car and scrounge some money, but yeah, it's, it's in the shed. I've only driven it locally, sort of had too much going on in the back shed with uh, other projects and trying to keep to my rule of one project at a time, but plan to do a little bit of mechanical work to it shortly and actually start enjoying it, put some miles on it. The 39 Plymouth Brewmindo Coupe was sort of a, a tough street slash hot rod in the 80s with a small block, a Muncie. You know, back then it had the Jag rear end and, and sprint wheels. Um, and that's how I remember the car as a kid. Later become a full drag car uh, when the pro street scene come along. We used to talk beforehand about when you got older, actually taking it back to a street car together. Unfortunately, we didn't get a chance to do that together. So I know, you know, in his words, the car still scared him and he didn't want me on the street with it the way it was. So, you know, that was always the plan to tame it down without losing its identity, but make it a usable car. It's still running the same block, uh, small block Chev aftermarket bow tie block that was the race motor. It was blown injected on methanol previously, pretty wild, 1,000 plus horsepower. You know, we've put new AFR heads on it. I've changed the intake. Still running a 671 supercharger. I've gone from mechanical injection uh, to EFI and got it all under the bonnet. Again, part of keeping that street look. It's still pretty happy, uh, not too angry. Taken a lot of the 90s billet theme that, you know, was big back then, and turned that down, painted stuff black. Gone for that more hot rod look. It's still got its heritage and still the car that it was between those two builds, but yeah, it's definitely a usable car now. Yeah, so my 36 has probably been built in my head 100,000 times. Heavily inspired by, you know, the early Barris cars, the Westergaard style has come through in that car. Without trying to be different for the sake of being different, tried to step away from some of the more generic choices, you know, and example that's probably the Packard grill. Pretty common that they've got the LaSalle. The 41 Packard clipper grill is a bit more of a uncommon choice. The benefit of taking a long-term project is you take the time to really think the stuff out. And when we got to the point that we're ready to do the, you know, the heavy side of the metal fabrication, extremely lucky that Aaron Bray from OG Customs was involved and in, you know, what I could see in my head, he's the guy I could actually explain to, he could see and then had the skill to actually go and make it in metal. The way every line has been thought out and the way he's been able to execute it, you know, I'm pretty lucky now to have the base of what should be a pretty awesome custom. With each build, you know, for me, I think it is important to have an era or a style to aim to, but you 100% want to put your own flavour on it. Unfortunately for me, I think a lot of the car scene, the more modern car scene, is just about that shock factor. Um, big wheels, huge engine out the bonnet, how do I get your attention? For me, it's about, well, you know, the real compliments when guys that get it, that understand the style, stop looking at your car and go, hang on, there's something about it, and can pick those little nuances. Uh, for me, that's the art of it, well that's the, the rewarding part when you know, guys that understand what you're trying to achieve, dig it, you know, that's, you've got the validation because you're happy with it, but when you get that, that's the extra uh, icing on the cake. Hot rods are my therapy. Yeah, I spend my, my week uh, in the office looking at a computer, uh, managing people, managing money, managing problems, but come the weekend I love to get in the shed, I love to do something, actually get my hands dirty, solve a different type of problem, you know, whether it's working on them or going for a drive, it's a total change of environment for me. When I want to go to work, Monday to Friday, I like driving my new car. I won't lie, I love my aircon, I love my power steering. I just want to get there, yeah? But when I get in these cars, I don't want it to feel like a new car. I get in an old car, my phone's not connected to the car. I'm connected to the car, I'm connected to the road. So I think it does take you back in time to a time where it was simpler, a little bit slower, and more time was actually spent being in the moment as opposed to just trying to get somewhere.